going to lay out this portion of that. This course is focused on this piece of it. App development are handled in other courses. We have an intro to uh, Apple iOS that Paul teaches. We have an intro to uh, Android development that, that I'm teaching. And we also have an advanced Android that, that I will teach starting in the spring. So this is a topic of this class. Now, approaches that you can take in developing a mobile website. One hardly counts, but we'll mention it anyhow. Three strategies are, first of all, to do nothing, all right? That hardly counts, right, as a strategy, to do nothing. Um, I guess what I'm saying is do nothing is where you have a design that works and is effective both on a desktop slash laptop environment and in a mobile environment. That's probably pretty rare. All right. Conceivable? Sure. Uh, widespread? Probably not. All right. So we'll mention that. Probably the smallest websites might kind of fit in that category. Maybe you have developed something that works and you don't really need to do anything to make it work on a mobile. That really doesn't count though. The next strategy is responsive. And what do you suppose I mean by responsive? What's the term responsive web design mean? I, I would interpret that as different style sheets available. Uh, that's a big component of it. All right. The I, yeah, go ahead. It knows that it's, uh, it's not device reading. Right. Right. Both those two things sort of together work through it. A responsive web page would be a single web page that is smart enough to know, all right, where it's being viewed, at least in broad terms of where it's being viewed. And then can apply different style sheets, diff, you know, can apply different style sheets depending on where it's being viewed. So we have essentially one page, at least two style sheets, and is smart enough to know who is viewing it. By who I mean on what device is is viewing it. Separate sites 
relates to having essentially a traffic cop that will direct someone to a page depending on the platform. So there's two different pages. If you are accessing it from a desktop, you get page A. If you are accessing it via a mobile device, you go to page B. You can see examples of this if, for example, you go to ccc.edu. If you look at the URL, the URL says lorrainccc.edu slash m. So it's smart enough to know I'm viewing this on a mobile device, and instead of the full-blown website, I get this web page. That is just a subset of the functionality of the full site. Oftentimes you'll see, like for example with CNN, I believe, if you type in CNN.com or www.CNN.com, you'll get redirected if you're on a mobile device to M.CNN.com. So it automatically is smart enough to redirect you and point you to oops, the right site, depending on whether you're coming in via So is that responsive or a separate site? That's a separate site. Uh, in other words, there are two different pages. The details of what they're called, you know, the details of that are, are not important right now, but there are two pages, one that lives at www.cnn and one that lives at m.cnn. Now, what is different, anyhow, about browsing the web via a desktop and browsing the web on a mobile device? It's not a dumb question. <laughs> I real mean, estate. pardon me? Well, uh, the real estate. Yeah. First of all, the size of the screen, right? The real estate, how much space is available. And even if it's, even if it's literally the same amount of pixels, you know, how much is actually visible and how much you can see, all right? So smaller screen is one difference between that. Smaller screen has an impact on your design, right? What's another difference? This one might be a little subtle, a little more subtle. I, I think that the, the download speed is... The, okay, the download speed, that's a, that's a good one. That wasn't the one I had in mind, but that's definitely it. Typically, people from a desktop are going to get, uh, going to have a, a higher bandwidth than, than someone browsing via a mobile device. Controls? How so? You don't have a mouse. Right. How the user interacts with uh, with the web page is going to be different. They're going to be touching a screen as opposed to clicking a mouse. That should have something to do with like the size of the links that you make and, and how close the links are spaced together. You know, uh, on some sites, you know, I I put my big old finger on one of them and I end up like clicking six links and who knows which one it gives me, right? Probably the one that my, my finger touched down on first. So that's, that's a good uh, difference. Another difference between how. This has less to do with the, with the, the physical environment than the mindset of the user. Alright? Think of browsing through LCC's website. Um, if you wanted to research what classes that you wanted to take uh, next term, or what classes were re required for a certain degree, 
Is that something you would probably want to do on a mobile device or probably want to do on a desktop? Probably want to do that on a desktop. Right? That's going to involve poking around and reading a lot of stuff, and it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. What might be something that you would use a mobile website for LC to look up? What might be a typical usage for someone trying to browse LC's website? Sports schedule. Sports schedule. Yeah, when's a basketball team play? Anything else? I was going to say Stocker. Stocker, same, same thing. Same thing depending on your own preferences, either cultural or sporting events. A map of the, a map of the uh, uh, campus. I used that a couple of times just because I wasn't familiar with all the abbreviations of the buildings when students were asking me, so I would pop open the mobile site and click on that. All right? Big one that we'll be coming to towards the end of this semester, right? Are we snowed out today? You know, is class canceled because of snow? You might look that up. You know, let's say you were coming home from work and, gee, let me, you know, it's snowing pretty bad out here. I wonder if school's canceled. So that's maybe a little more subtle difference, but it's a difference nonetheless. That is, People don't, even, even taking into account the, the, the physical differences between it, which, which are a big deal, people don't use mobile devices to browse the web the same way they use a desktop or a laptop. They, another way, the way I like to phrase it in, in terms of design is they have different goals. They have different goals in browsing the web via uh, a desktop versus via a mobile. So, where does that leave us with this? Well, depending on the particular situation, you take one of these two approaches or some sort of weird hybrid between the two. All right? If truly there are wildly different goals, between desktop users and mobile users, then redirecting between two different sites is probably a good idea. For example, LC. LC redirects you to a mobile site. All right? If, however, you know, you're talking about a restaurant, all right? Website for a restaurant, you know, what will I look up if I'm browsing via desktop? Well, what the menu is, the hours that are open, you know directions to get there. What am I going to browse on a mobile device? Well, the menu, <laughs> you know, how to get there when they're open. So probably wouldn't be too much difference in the goals for that particular case. So maybe the responsive website would be a better match for that. I guess in both cases you have to consider not just, you know, you have to consider the, the difference in the goals of the people browsing one manner versus the other, and that'll help guide you to decide which the better approach uh, there is. Even going back to that, you know, it all comes down to the problem. You know, we talked about all these different alternatives and these different paths that you can take. Uh, there's no sort of silver bullet where I can say, gee, do it this way or gee, do it that way. You really have to look at the particular problem you're trying to solve and from there design a solution that, that matches that. All right. I think we're out of time, or we're actually over time. Um, your first assignment is to do some research on responsive web design and build a page that contains those values and explains what that is. We will start talking about that in more detail uh, in lecture on uh, Wednesday. So you're welcome to read the textbook about it, and you're welcome to start doing research if anyone is going to lab. So typically even classes, uh, people, some people prefer not to go to lab. I leave that up to you if you want to go. You're also welcome to work on it on your own machine. All right, questions? What, uh, perhaps this qualifies as a hybrid or mm -hmm. it's just me being devil's advocate, but uh, even on the desktops, I've seen some pages which are just kind of pretty much built as flex pages where you literally squeeze the browser window and mean everything. Yeah. The columns are literally 
be squishing based on I mean, yeah, yeah that, that's an example. Re responsive in general terms would be anytime the web page is like smart enough to know a little bit about the environment and therefore position it. So, you know, even if you do things such as having percentage of widths and, and all that, it becomes to a degree responsive. Uh, when we're using in this context, we're talking about responsive specific to a mobile versus a desktop environment. But, for example, you can even talk about a, a page that's responsive to someone based on their time zone, right? Uh, Google, if you do a Google search, do a Google search for Italian restaurant here, you'll get restaurants in the, in the Lorraine Illyria area, right? You do, a, you do that same search in Columbus, you'll get restaurants in the Columbus area. So that, in a way, is also responsive. So anytime the page has a sense of like what's going on, all right, you could argue that that is in some sense responsive. But in this case, this is specifically relating to the issue of where it's being viewed on a mobile device versus a uh, desktop. Is that uh, geography bias something that scripted into it, like you mentioned? Earlier. Well, uh, again, th that would be something that would live on uh, through the server-side code. That probably won't be something that would be built into the HTML, but would be built into the server-side code that generates it. So, um, I, I guess in a nutshell uh, is, how, how do I want to say this? For me, it's less about labeling it as one way or another than understanding that one thing that you can do in a mobile environment is send them to a totally different page. Another thing that you can do is make one page that reacts to their environment and, and displays it. So, I mean, um, that, you know, that's the point I'm trying to get across more so than splitting hairs about, you know, what's responsive and what isn't. Other questions? So will you, um, will there be a lab today? Well, I'll go to lab. If no one's there, I'll go home. <laughs> well, I, I don't have the book yet. Would it be beneficial for me to go to lab? Or? Well, you, the, the first assignment is to look up uh, responsive web design. So you certainly could do that, or you could do that at home. So that's your call. All right. Other questions? Um, I know. Uh, in the past, I've gotten involved with uh, style sheet switching, usually based on time of day. I know there's ones out there that are random mm -hmm. uh, in terms of whenever you log on, and, you know, background is a roll of the dice. So, I mean, I've right. seen those based on, like I said, time mm -hmm. of day, date. Um, am I interpreting right that the, the scripting would be able to recognize a, a device by brand or just a device in general or well again several alternatives how to do this all right one way to do it is what is called a media query where you actually build into the style sheet a rule about when it gets applied and you probably have already seen that um, if you've if you've gone to a page and then like print version of the page it's probably the same HTML page with a different style sheet applied to it. All right. Um, so one method is is through media queries, and they talk about that in the first chapter of the book. Another method would be through scripting of, of a kind, either through client side scripting or server side scripting. Either uh, you know both the client and the server. Uh, both client and server-side scripting can ask questions about the environment. And based on the answers that it gets, does some determination of, of what environment it is. So either on the server-side or on the client-side, um, you can do that. You know, back in the old days, uh, when, when, uh, web sta when, when standardization was really uh, a big problem and there were huge browser compatibility issues, we had um, a block of server-side code I think it was server-side code, that would look at the environment and apply a Windows IE Explorer style sheet, a Windows Netscape style sheet, showing you how old it is, a Mac 
Netscape or a Mac Safari, I don't know. It chose between the four popular, most popular configurations uh, of that, and it was a server-side script. So um, there's, again, there's several ways to do that responsive bit where it knows the environment. And the way that we're going to start out talking about it is through the uh, CSS media queries. Other questions? <laughs> 